Hello Pulp Hounds! So in this video I want to look at a gentleman called John Hulkin. Well I'd like to look at him but I don't think that's going to be possible. Uh, John Hulkin didn't just write horror, he wrote uh, a couple of thrillers and a kind of spicy intrigue novel and even a, a young adult fiction novel about werewolves. Um, mainly right in during the early to mid 80s. He started off in uh, anthologies in the late 70s for Fontana and kind of ranges like that. But his first horror novel, which we're going to look at first, is a bit of a classic, guys. Okay, so one thing that Mr. Halkin uh, certainly enjoyed was almost like insectoid body horror. Um, so let's crack on with a blurb. This is what used to sell books. This is what still sells books. This is the cover and the blurb. I'm going to give you both. From his first terrifying bloody encounter with them, Matt Parker knew they were lethal to the human race. Out of the murky sewers, they suddenly attacked, snapping, biting, ripping at his flesh. After the first sensationalism had died down, the newspapers lost interest. The experts dismissed them as no more dangerous than ferrets. People started to forget, but Matt knew different. All the time they were growing in size and numbers, and they preyed on living flesh. For when they returned, slithering out of village ponds, swimming pools, even bath pipes, the fate of the British population was sealed, and there was no more horrifying way to die. So yeah, kind of burst onto the horror scene. Obviously this is a, a Hamlin who uh, published a strange unconnected trilogy by John Halkin, more of which we'll see in a moment. So his next book in uh, 1982 well, it kind of moved away a little bit from the slithery insect eating us all up kind of genre. Let's move that down a bit. There we go. With The Unholy. Now, The Unholy is uh, quite a bizarre book. Um, as uh, I mean, uh, so is Slither. It's not like he's writing literary highbrow well constructed horror these are these are just like cheesy horror tales that smack you in the chops so the unholy let's blurb it guys once in a millennium a terrifying force is unleashed the unholy just a shriveled arm a harmless old relic hidden away in a cave by superstitious peasants then it's released to take on a horrifying new life warming itself on human blood ripping its victims apart, grafting itself onto their open wounds. Until naked fear cuts a blood-stained swathe through a panic-stricken city. A drunken tramp lurching through the side streets, the chorus girls in a sleazy strip joint, a defenceless busload of student demonstrators. No one is safe from the foul cravings of the unholy. So one thing, one thing I'm not doing is giving out any kind of review spoilers. When I was younger, buying these wonderful paperbacks, the cover made me pick it up, the blurb made me buy it. So I'm giving you guys the same, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to stick with. We're going to have cover and blurb. See what you like. So uh, uh, next, we jump forward to so that's 1982, 1984. Um, this this strange unconnected trilogy that Halkin wrote, um, basically connected by the fact that they're a bit bonkers, and every book begins with the letter S. So, this is uh, yeah, 1984. We had slime, which again is a uh, creatures eating us kind of thing. A boy accidentally fallen overboard, a child in a paddling pool, an old man taking his daily swim. These are their first prey. 
They arrived originally in ones and twos, deadly jellyfish eager to feast on human flesh, attaching themselves lovingly to their victims' bodies, then stinging, paralyzing, feeding. Nothing can stop them, not even on dry land. Thousands surge over the beaches, fight their way inland up creeks and rivers, leaving behind their telltale smears of luminescent slime. But the final horror starts when they begin to breed. For now, their young appear in reservoirs and storage tanks, slipping through drain pipes and water taps as humankind faces ghoulish extinction. Yeah, I mean, if something promises uh, ghoulish extinction, <laughs> then I'd take my money, take my... Uh, uh, I didn't pay a pound for it. What's the price sticker? Rodney Books and Games. One pound. Uh, and then let's move on to the last in the... And probably one of the, the, the strangest in this Triple S trilogy that's got just a... Just a it's okay, hang on. We'll, we'll we'll put it up. Here we go. So Squelch is the last one. Um, I don't know if it, it's it's not always that easy to see on this, but there is a giant plastic caterpillar up on her face. Um, and I don't I don't want you to think I'm taking the mick out of these books. I adore books like this. I always have done. I always will do. Obviously doing YouTube videos about books like this. If something looks slightly outrageous and the blurb on the back is like telling me that I've never read anything quite as horrific as this, then I'm in. I am so in. So Squelch rounded off this unconnected trilogy. Um, let's hear the blurb. When Ginny first spotted the beautiful moths, she felt sure they were welcoming her to a new cottage. But by the time the lethal caterpillars had arrived, she knew she was very, very wrong. Huge, green and hairy, they ravenously preyed upon flesh, burrowing into the softest, most unprotected parts of the human body. And their first victim was Ginny's own sister. But she was only the first. Yeah, so uh, they, uh, <laughs> the, uh, again, I don't want to give you too many spoilers. You can probably presume this from the blurb. The caterpillars burrow into your most vulnerable areas. <laughs> it's just wonderful genius. I love it. I love, yeah, these three books are three of my favourites in the world. Um, so there was, a, there was a thriller in 88, but Halkin's last horror book was in 1987 and it was Bloodworm which is an absolute mad belter of a book it's so much fun uh, and the blurb the strange new beetles look like exquisite jewels covered with emerald and yellow markings but utterly murderous. Accompanying them are something even more terrifying. Gigantic worms that turn pink after feasting on human blood. These lethal allies now converge in devastation and massacre of a terrified city. And no one in London can escape their horrendous onslaught. So yeah, that's uh, Halkin's horror output. Um, he kind of sits the style kind of sits somewhere between like Harry Adam Knight was a lot of his stuff even though it was a pseudonym was really bonkers and Richard Lewis was a bit more traditional horror but going with the creatures and beasties it's, it's kind of somewhere in between that um, they're all solid well paced um the grizzly bits are certainly grizzly. The spicy bits are spicy. Uh, occasionally you find the plots meander a bit, but you're never too far away from a bit of a grizzly payoff. Obviously, it's someone being, apart from the unholy, it's someone being eaten by something that shouldn't exist. So that's always fun uh, and a good family activity. 
so as for who um Halkin was, this is this is the big mystery, this is the fun part. So nobody actually knows. The only thing I found online is a uh a, a little reply to a post on too much horror fiction uh from all round wonderful gentleman of British horror, Ramsey Campbell, who, uh, on a post about Halkin, said, Halkin was the pseudonym of someone quite high up in the BBC arts production in the early 80s. I'm not sure if I ever got his real name, but I did buy a tale of his for New Terrors. Sadly, Sonny Meta at Pan knocked it out of the manuscript, along with a couple of others. So even Ramsey, that was buying... Uh, but in the story from John Halkin, no idea who he was. Um, he was high up in BBC Arts production. I'd like to think, I'd love to think, that he, he had this arty, highbrow persona to maintain and then went home and hammered out these brilliant literary nasties on his typewriter. That's uh, that's something that makes me happy. Um Unfortunately, as with a lot of 80s horror paperbacks, the value of these is creeping up a little bit. Um, especially Bloodworm, that seems to be the the priciest one to get now. But values may go down again. But the uh, Triple S trilogy, I've seen that as uh, offered as an ebook on uh, a few different websites. So if you kind of want to give them a go before you start, spending on slightly more expensive paperbacks then check out the ebook and if it's something that you love and you really want a copy of you can then go ahead and get a get a paperback copy so yeah that's john halkin if you're john halkin and you're watching this and you want to get in touch and say yeah man i wrote these that would be awesome or if you've got any more clues as to john who john halkin is or was then uh, either leave a comment or send me a little message or you know, just get in touch somehow. And maybe we'll do a second video. Maybe we'll do a second grand unveiling and reveal who this uh, genius of insect and body horror was. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.